puffheaders are amazing snakes. If you look at the range of different foraging modes that snakes have, some snakes move around and look actively for, for prey, whereas others use the technique that a puffheader uses, and that is it lays an ambush. Puffheaders rely on this whole thing of just not being found. If a puffheader feels it's in danger, its first reaction is just to freeze and keep its head down. So everything about a puffheader's biology is around this ambush, around the crypsis, around keeping its head down and really not being obvious to predators or prey around it. But we also noticed that a lot of the predators that feed on puffheaders rely mainly on scent to detect their prey. And so it stands to reason that puffheader, because it just freezes when danger is around, that it must also have some sort of a chemical crypsis, a way of remaining undetected by those predators that have got such good senses of smell. Some of my study animals would wander into the ranger's properties and most of the rangers had dogs and I'd find my puff header with the transmitter in it in an ambush position in one of the flower beds of the ranger and on several occasions I'd have the ranger's dogs come up to greet me and run straight over the snake and just be oblivious as to its presence there. Now that snake's been in the garden with the dog for a few days and the dog hasn't detected it. So dogs are scent-oriented predators. So that was the first sort of clue that put me onto there's got to be something going on here. So that led to um, a series of experiments that we ran where we trained dogs and eventually meerkats to show us whether they could detect the scent of a whole range of snakes, one of them the puff adder. And what was very clear is that they were able to detect most snake species without a problem. But um, when it came to puff it was as if they just don't have a scent. We're here at the Monty Bird Gardens and they partnered with us on, on this research. They allowed us access to the meerkat colony, which we trained to do scent matching. And the meerkats, we use them to basically tell us how smelly certain snake species are. So with scent matching with an animal, what you do is you train them to understand a technique. And so they learn to understand if we give them a scent sample, uh, regardless of what it is, they must go and find its matching pair in a lineup that we give them. In. So we start this work off by telling the animal what scent we're looking for, and we do that by giving him a target class with the scent on. And as soon as he shows the behaviour, he gets rewarded with a mealworm, and then he'll walk the line and find the matching pair, hopefully, and indicate through scratching on it. Are intelligent animals um, and uh, although we do our own in-house enrichment all the time in the form of uh, puzzles and games and things like that it's just to stimulate uh, their brains and to really get them thinking um, and they had to do exactly that for all of the experiments that were done um, so it really got their brains working and I, I believe they had a lot of fun doing it. I haven't yet explicitly tested how this mechanism is working and how puff adders are able to remain scentless. But we have a few ideas and, and one of them is that they are um, metabolized very slowly, have a low me metabolic rate and we think that that might contribute to um, maintaining their odor levels below a certain threshold. Uh, and then one of the other things that we also think might come into play is their micro-ornamentation of their scales. That's something that we're looking into, but we don't know right now. It's quite exciting for us.